What's going on everybody? Time for another Real Talk video. But before I get into that, I want to let you know this one will be titled Views from the Sticks. Now, this is going to be something where I just talk about some issues that come across my timeline and I give my opinion on it. Pretty much that's all I'm doing here. This is not something you need to take serious, get mad about, get angry, get anal, get frustrated or come at me over as some of y'all have tend to do when I give my honest opinion on things that people tend to go one way with and I go another. So this will be views from the sticks. So that's what I will be calling it since it's from a gamer's perspective and me just keeping it real, whether you like it or not, whether it's the popular opinion or not. So with that being said, that is the disclaimer for this video. So hopefully you guys will get with it before you get out of here and you know getting mad and getting your feelings in state okay so with that being said let's get into the video first of all i want to say happy memorial day to all the people out there that are celebrating memorial day hopefully you guys are staying safe because apparently somebody that i knew who actually introduced me to social media's twitter app was killed this week i want to say rrp to banger in the troy Ave shooting i did know that man that man was a good dude and uh yeah he was apparently shot and I won't get into the, any further details on that, but like I said, this is views from the sticks. So I'm going to talk about random topics, okay? So I'm trying to give you something to listen to while you are out and about or whatever you're doing. Or if you're just chilling somewhere and you want some commentary to listen to or rock to, this will be a gameplay commentary. So you can have something to watch for those of you out there who want to see some gameplay. Okay, so let's start off by saying the first video that came across my timeline was about... Black YouTubers not supporting one another. Now, this is a YouTuber who has 600,000 subscribers. I'm not going to say his name because this is not a B video. It's not me trying to get at him, but I apparently did watch some of the video and I was a little irritated and disgusted at the first few minutes of the video. Let me turn this off because somebody's annoying me on Facebook. But anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so he's pretty much saying in his video that uh, black YouTubers don't support one another. And I always get a little disgusted when I hear bigger YouTubers say that because I noticed a lot of successful YouTubers that are black don't support each other. But how do you get to be the guy to say it if you're one of the people that's actually part of the problem? A lot of y'all YouTubers see potential in other channels and y'all don't support them out of fear that they will outgrow you. And you don't want to be the reason that they outgrow you, so you don't support. Let's just keep it 100, guys. This is what you guys are afraid of. This is what you guys are doing. Y'all don't support each other out of fear that the potential for this channel to get bigger than yours is there. And you see it. Now, if you see that potential, you won't support the YouTuber. And that's just how it is. Now, me, as far as in the music business, I used to always help out up-and-coming artists, shoot videos for them, do promotion for them, help them with social media. Because I knew that if they had potential to be somebody, I could also eat off that as well. But of, of, I got to be honest, a lot of people that I did help get to where they are when they signed their deals, they kind of just forgot about me and left me in the dust. But I was also able to turn that into something for myself as far as a resume is concerned and use that credential to get to another place where I could get a little change here and there. So there is still something to be gained from when people do that. There's no, re there's no reason to actually be afraid or fear helping other YouTubers or just being supportive of YouTubers you think have potential because... The same YouTuber who said this is the same guy that'll tell you he don't want YouTubers that he watched to know that he's watching their videos. But then he wants you to like and comment and subscribe to his channel. So this is why the black YouTube community in whole is a bunch of suck ass dudes. Now, I happen to know a couple of other YouTubers who said on numerous occasions that if they actually see this guy, they're going to put hands and feet on him. So he's pretty much going to get more popular and be world star. So with that being said, I kind of find it ironic that the black gaming community in general finds a way to actually point out something about somebody else when we all do stupid shit. Now, as far as I'm concerned, me personally, I know I have a tendency to keep it a little too rugged on, on you know, my perspective of how I react to people. So people look at me like, man, I don't know if this guy's alive, why or what. But at the end of the day, for the most part, most of y'all get it. And y'all know that I'm just keeping it 100. I'm just keeping it real. And that's pretty much what I know to do. That's the best thing to do in any situation so that if anything goes a certain way, you really have nothing to worry about if you were authentic. So with that being said, Black YouTubers in general are kind of scumbags and douchebags, and I, I'll keep it real. I can say that I've had I've had many bad encounters with a lot of YouTubers who tend to be black, and many great and good encounters with YouTubers who were not black. And the ones that I had a bad interaction with that were not black, they were actually trying to be black. So, with that being said, maybe uh, there's something with us as a general whole that we may need to look in the mirror at and just start learning how to just be authentic and not worry about 
having all of these feelings about where this person is going to go or what's going to happen if I fuck with this YouTuber. So with that being said, hopefully you guys could soak that in and uh, learn to just be real with yourself and stop, you know, worrying about other people and where they're going to go and what they're going to get from you interacting with them. So that's my take on the whole thing about black YouTubers and interacting on YouTube. There's a lot of fear and that's why they don't do it. So hopefully uh, uh, we can move past that. And I could go on to some other topics now. Let's talk about the NVIDIA 1080. Um, apparently, the NVIDIA 1080 came out this weekend, and nobody's able to find one or get one. And for the people who did, of course, they did the usual price gouging. And if you go on eBay, you can find these cars for anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000, which is kind of ridiculous, considering if you have the latest card that was out before this, you get the same kind of performance damn near that you're going to get from this card, which is the main reason I'm a little bit disappointed in the NVIDIA 980 Ti. Um, I'm very disappointed in the fact that um the card is uh, not stronger than... Uh, it's not much stronger than a 980 Ti, which I get that they couldn't make it too much stronger because then people who brought the 980 Ti's, like such as myself, would probably have an issue with this car being so dramatically stronger. Just like when they say that the uh, 1070 is, is powerful than a Titan, it's not much more powerful than a Titan. Granted, for the price variant, it's an issue. I could get where somebody who spent $1,100 would be mad that a car that's less than $400 can do what their car can do. So there is more of a reason to be buttered over that. But at the end of the day, once again, if you have a Titan, you're still good until they announce a new Titan. So with that being said, it's not really the kind of thing where it really matters on paper, but it matters as far as your feelings and your ego is concerned. So that's really up to you how you want to take that. That's one of those situations where if you want to take it personal, you take it personal. If you know that your game is performing how you want it to and you're able to max out your shit, who really cares? Because you're getting the best gaming experience, which is what this is supposed to be about. But of course, once again, people like to get emotional and they like to be petty and say that I have the new card, even though your card is still as good as mine. Mine is the new card. Yours is the old card. I'm the man. You're not as you get what I'm saying. So that's pretty much what the situation is with that. So with that being said, uh, yeah, let's move on. Now, let's talk about the uh, FPS situation and the FPS team for a second, guys. Um, currently, I have been taking a break from FPS, but all over my timeline, I see you guys going ham over Overwatch. People are having shit fits and having babies. Literally, dudes is having babies out their ass over the fact that this game got uh, a 10 score. And I was asking on Twitter, and of course, you fools do not um, answer me on Twitter, even though some of you follow me. Some of you guys follow me. I get new followers every day, but nobody replies to my tweets. Of course, when I tweet, you cunts, cocksuck. Anyway, I'm just playing, but um, I'm trying to say follow me on Twitter on the load up if you if, if you follow it, what I'm saying. But anyway, with that being said, I digress. Let's get back on track. Um, I really don't see how the game was a ten. I kind of just skipped the beta. I skipped everything. I can't judge it because I didn't play it. But from what I see in gameplay, here we go, here we go. I'll go with the Twitch review. For what I see on Twitch of the game, it does look cool and everything. But I'm just not up for another FPS game and dishing out another sixty dollars for it. Um, games like that, I wouldn't play on PC simply because I use a controller primarily. So I would get abolished, which I learned from Battlefield, um, you know, Battlefront, Star Wars. If you don't use a keyboard on PC, you better sit your ass down coming over there with a controller or FPS. Just let me tell you guys that off the rizip. If you come to PC with a controller in your hand for a FPS game, you will have to sit your ass down. OK, you, you you might as well just get a pillow and a blanket because you're going to fucking sleep. OK, with that being said. So I've been taking a break from the FPS game. So the simple fact that I'm waiting for Battlefield 1 to come out because that's the only FPS game I'm really looking at right now. Of course, I will be guilty of getting the new Call of Duty simply because I just feel like I can't miss it. It was the king of FPS at one time, and I'm a loyal person, and I know my loyalty is going to betray me once again, just like it did with the last three Call of Duties, but I digress because I'm just keeping it 100. Your boy is going to play himself and buy it just because the hype is too real or Call of Duty still. I, it's just the hype is just at a level that I, I can't, I cannot um, ignore or avoid the hype, okay? I just can't, so just curse me out now. Um, you know, tell me I'm a dickhead, whatever you got to do, because at least I'm admitting the hype gets me every time a Call of Duty. It has been annually getting me since this generation of consoles has been released and it has never failed to get me and piss me off. And yes, Call of Duty's hot for like the first couple of matches. And then after two or three days, it's in the cabinet. 
Yes, yes, I am guilty of putting another Call of Duty that comes out this year in the cabinet, okay? I already know it's going to go in the cabinet. may not even open it. Just keeping it a hundred. That's just what I do. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I have skipped Battleborn and, um, Overwatch, and I'm hearing good things about both games. Um, some people are telling me Battleborn is, has nothing on Overwatch. Some people are saying Battleborn is better than Overwatch. But judging from the scores, Overwatch is a better game. I cannot really speak because I just skipped both of these games because I'm not up to those, uh, ironic, those ironically, uh, borderlands kind of, uh, you know, silly FPS. I like my FPS games to be realistic. Star Wars was one of those things where it was kind of like a fantasy. So I wanted to, uh, be able to play in that universe. So it was okay. But outside of that, I mean, this whole thing about, um, having, you know, monkeys and, and, and you know, fighting gorillas and shit. I, I, I don't know. This is not, I don't know. I'm never into those animal games and those Mario Nintendo games. I'm sorry. Like I grew up on that, but I'm at an age where I can't have a, a turtle with a gun in his hand and it's just shit like that. I can't do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I, I've realized lately now that I'm more into third person games. If it's a third person action game, then I'm going to cop it immediately. But if it's first person, I'm not too into first person as I am third person. If the game has a first person and third person option, then I will automatically get it off the rip. But if it's just like primarily a FPS title, I'm kind of like done with that. I'm, I'm at a point where I need something new. I need that next new fix. They say Overwatch is it. Down the line, if I get it on a little slick, I'll, I'll probably check it out. But right now, I'm good. Doom, I was like, nope, when I played Doom. So I'm sorry. That's just what it is on the FPS scene. That's why I've not done no reviews for these games. I have no interest in these games. I'm actually still playing the Division on the 1.2 um, Incursion update, the Conflict update, and I'm enjoying that a lot. And um, that's where I'm at right now. So with that being said, that's the situation on that. Um, I just covered these three topics. So let's just move on to something else. Because like I said, Battlefield 1 is the next FPS game I'm looking to actually play and try and put some time in and see what it's hitting for. So um, yeah, with that being said, let's move on. Let's see what else is going on in gaming news. Because um, I kind of don't really, uh, I've been kind of just not really into nothing and playing nothing. Um, as far as Uncharted, though, Uncharted was pretty good. That was like a really, really good game. I enjoyed it a lot. I know what we can talk about next. We can talk about the Xbox One, this new system called the Scorpio. First of all, I want to say to the Xbox community, um, you guys are pretty foolish to think that the next Xbox would actually be called Scorpio. This is just a code name, just like the PlayStation Neo. These consoles are only coming out because they need to be able to give you a better gaming experience. They should have never brought these consoles out to begin with because they're so terrible and the hardware is over 10 years old as far as it being dated. This is 2005 hardware that would be in a PC. So stop even mentioning these consoles with PC. It's just disrespectful to yourself as a person that uh, is using a piece of technology. You know, you know, just stop. It's, it's just terrible to even say. So the... uh the next Xbox. Now they're talking about teraflops, which you guys don't understand. None of that really matters. What you need to be worried about with your next console is the HDMI port. And if it's a HDMI 1.4 or HDMI 2.0, because if it is a 1.4, then you know you're not going anywhere as far as the tech is concerned. You're just getting a new con console. If the HDMI port is a 2.0, then you have the 4K option available. Now you guys who think these consoles will be 4K, more than likely, it's slightly possible because I'm going to blow you guys heads away. No homo. Right now, when I tell you that the actual HDMI port that is on the current PS4 and Xbox One is a 1.4, it is actually capable of 4K at 30 hertz. And for some reason, people have this in their head that that's not capable or possible of being done. Well, let me explain. You can actually get 4K on one of these consoles by simply upscaling the native resolution from 1080p to 2160p. It's just that the game won't look like a 4K game. It won't look like actual 4K, but it will be possible of attaining 4K. So don't think that with these new consoles, 4K will not be around. It probably just won't look as good as PC. It probably will have moments when you will see 4K games or older games remastered in 4K, unfortunately. So are you ready for the re-remaster of your favorite titles that you just brought over? Because it's probably what you may see happening because this is the way that they do things. They kind of use this excuse that they're going to put the game out and they're going to use the old game and remaster it to say that they're learning the hardware because that's actually the excuse that they give when they do crap like that. So... Just be ready for it because that's what's happening. Okay, so let's move on from that because that's not actually something to talk about because 
the PlayStation needed a new console to help support the frame rates for the VR that is coming out, which I'm actually interested in checking out from PlayStation. But um, my experiences with the VR is something I'm not really enjoying because I don't like the way it makes me feel. Um, I feel like after about 20 or 30 minutes, I need to take that shit off. People are claiming that they're on it for hours. But um, I kind of think they're, they're, I think they're exaggerating a little bit or they're doing stuff like taking the headset off after a couple of minutes and coming back. I don't think people are actually sitting there for hours like they said, because I don't see how that's possible. But um, that was why PlayStation needed a new system, and I understood that. But as far as the Xbox is concerned, it's just way behind the uh, PlayStation. So I guess they needed to just be able to keep up. But at 18 million consoles versus 60 million, I think it's good, to, good and safe to say that shit's over, man. All right. So with that being said. Now, let's move on to the uh, actual VR experience that um, we're talking about. Apparently, reports are going out that the VR on the original PS4 is so bad that they recommend you don't even try it. Now, of course, Sony has not officially said this, but judging from the reports that are coming in from people who have tried it on the current generation of hardware, it is really bad. And this is something that is important because if you experience VR the wrong way, you will be very turned off from it and you will never want to try it again. So it is very, very important that they actually let people know this so that when people try VR, if they try it on the new, the old PlayStation, they will really hate VR. Just like when PlayStation 4 came out with their camera, that was a really bad experience. So uh, this is looking to be a repeat of that with the VR. So hopefully they fix that and they're honest with people so that people know this ahead of time. So just be warned that reports are stating that if you try the PlayStation VR on the original PS4, the experience is truly, truly uncomfortable and bad. And of course, this is due to the fact that these games are not running at 60 FPS and you actually want 90 FPS for your VR. So that's an issue. That's a big issue. Now I'm going to cover one more topic and then I'm going to let you guys go if you made it this far and you made it to the end of this video. Uh, Capcom is admitting that they did bring out Street Fighter V for the tournaments and they're catching so much flack for the um, considered to be failure as far as the sales of Street Fighter V. And it's actually because you put it on one console and not the other. Really, that was your problem. But at the end of the day, they are admitting that they should have finished the game and the fact that it wasn't finished did damage the sales of the game and they're just pretty much saying that from now on they're gonna um focus on completing games which is good because you spoke with your wallet and we took a w out of that now companies are taking note to the fact that they better not do this and i also think that games like hitman coming out this way also made them realize that look people are not going to take interest in your game people are already um bored with just games that they buy day one they beat it in two or three days and it goes back to gamestop so you think that if you give people an incomplete game they're gonna sit there and keep your game they're not even gonna buy your game so hopefully now game companies all around have taken note to this and they realize that yo people ain't falling for this don't think i'm gonna pay 60 dollars for a pc a game and hold on to your disc if i don't like what i see in the very beginning now people are not even giving these games a shot and right off the rip they're shooting them down so that's actually something that i think is a very good thing Thing. I'm glad that uh, Capcom has come out and said this because now other game companies can go, wait a minute, this is not what we thought. And um, Far Cry Primal was another good example of this. A lot of people were exposing that game, saying that the game map was actually the same map that was in Far Cry 4. And, you know, game developers are starting to get caught doing these type of things. And people are actually showing a lot of displeasure for these things by not buying them and supporting them like they normally would a game that was originally made. So with that being said... I feel like gamers took a W and they did the right thing in that situation to let people know that we're not having it. And um, yeah, that's a good thing, man. So that's it, man. So I'm going to pretty much end this here because I talked a lot and I don't want to keep you guys um ears ringing. I know this video is a bit long, but hopefully you guys enjoy it because like I said, I wanted to do a video where I talk about a couple of topics all in one video because it's Memorial Day and every time there's a holiday, I usually do a video like this. So I'll probably start titling these, like I said, views from the sticks where I talk about some topics 
And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, man. It's just a random commentary. It's not nothing special. It's not a game review, not a tech review, nothing like that. It's just me keeping it real with y'all and thanking y'all for rocking out with me and giving y'all something to listen to. Because some of y'all seem like y'all actually do like my opinion on things or like hearing my thoughts on things. And um, like I said, whatever you agree or disagree with, let me know in the comment section as usual. And let me know what other topics I missed or that I may need to do a video about or what you want to hear me talk about. Because, um, yeah, there's a lot going on. And honestly, I've been under a rock for the last couple of weeks like i said doing a lot of hardware things and getting ready for this trip to e3 and it's kind of kept me preoccupied from actually doing content the way i wanted to on my channel but anyway i'm out of here guys let me know what y'all think and like i said do be safe out there for memorial day i saw a lot of violence out there the police and um are not playing and it really don't pay it really doesn't matter where you're at just be careful because you know people are drinking and having a good time and you know things get crazy and people get out of hand and people do nuts so stuff so like i said you know God bless you and your family. Stay safe and be good and enjoy yourself. I'm out of here. Peace. Exactly the same as far as the edges and the way that things reflect. Now, the game should be around 1080p, but this is not confirmed. On my display, it did register as 1080p on both consoles.